How's it going everybody? It is Ethan Ono Coder and welcome back to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. Last episode, we went ahead and got our Java and Spring Boot project all configured. We also created a database to store our user information. And then we also got our Java in our database all connected. This episode, we're gonna go hop in and make sure that we can get our models working and actually get those models showing up in our Postgres database. So let's go ahead and hop into the code and get that done. So now that we have all of this set up, we have our database and connection to the database all set up, we can actually start taking a look at our package structure. So I like to break my packages up into models, repositories, services, controllers, and then some configuration, utilities, things like that. So the first thing that we actually need so we can see things inside of our database is to set up our models. So we are going to be using Spring Security. So that means that I am going to kind of do some forward thinking and get things ready to go before that. So one thing I do want to go ahead and do is I want to grab the console and I want to not restore. I want to grab it from or I want to extract it from here. So let's see if I can figure out how to do that. I just want the console out of the way because it's going to open and close all the time and I want as much space on this application screen as possible. So if we ever need to see the console, we can go ahead and open it up. First thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and make a new package for our models, com.models, like so. And let me go ahead and make this hierarchical so it looks better. What we need is we need a role for a Spring Security, and we also need some type of user that we're going to also use to authenticate things. So the user depends on the role. So we're going to go ahead and make the role first so we can get through the user. Something else I want to keep in mind is that I'm not going to be using Lombok because I want to be able to see all of our code. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the class called role. So what we need to first do is annotate this with our JPA annotation. So first I'm going to put entity. And this is essentially going to spell tell Spring that we want to store this inside of our database. And I'm also going to use table and I'm going to name this table roles. So role is optional, but I do want to change the table name. So that's why I'm going to use it. So now all we need inside this is an ID and the authority that we're going to give the user with these roles. So I'm going to go ahead and use at ID and at generated value like so. And I'm going to give this to strategy equal to generation type dot auto. And then finally, I am going to give it an at column with a name equal to role underscore ID. And then we're just going to have a private integer. If we wanted to, we could do a long here, uh, but I am going to use integer role ID. All right, so now we can go ahead and start importing these. So ID marks it as the ID. Generated value is going to generate this ID for us automatically. It's going to figure out the best way fit. And then at column, we'll name the column to roll ID. I like using the underscore to name our columns. So that's how I do it. And we're also going to have a private string authority. Again, this is forward thinking for whenever we get into our authentication stuff instead of spring security they call the roles authorities so that's why we're doing that so now i'm just going to make a couple of uh constructors so first we're going to go ahead and go source and construct using fields we'll do a no arg and an all arg constructor so i'm not using long block because i want to see all the code but i am going to go ahead and make my id work for me so go ahead and do a no arg and all arg. Um, we'll go ahead and do our getters and setters as well. We want getters and setters for everything. And I'm quickly also going to make a two string just for the heck of it if we ever want to print this out. So there we are. If we wanted to, we could also do equals and stuff like that. But at this point, we should actually see our roles pop up in our dbver. So if we go into our dbver and right click and refresh our table, we can see our roles and our roles have a role ID and authority. So that means that this has successfully worked. So next, what we want to go ahead and do is set up our user. I'm kind of on the fence about this, but I'm thinking about possibly making a user builder at some point. I'm not 100% sure. We'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and make our user class. So new class, call this user and go ahead and finish. 
Again, we are going to be modifying user quite a bit. So I'm not going to create all of the constructors and all of that stuff. Once I'm pretty confident that the user is completed, that's when I'll add the constructors and things. We will go ahead and have to annotate this with entity. And then we also going to have to say at table because user is a keyword. So we need to call this users. Also, I already messed up. This should be called application user. So it doesn't conflict with the spring uh, security user. So let me go ahead and refactor this. I'm going to call this application user. And we will see later on why it's called application user, but we're not quite to that point yet in spring security. So it is fine. Um, just know that there is a, a method behind my madness. So here again, we'll need an ID. We'll say generated value. And we will say strategy is equal to generation type auto again. So this will essentially just tell spring to say, Hey, determine what the best course of action is. And then our column will have a name of user underscore ID. Cause this is the naming convention I like to use. This again, will just be a private integer user ID. And then we can go ahead and import these annotations. Now, what do we want our user to have? So in the actual Twitter sign up flow, it only has name. So we're actually going to be making this a little bit more normalized than what Twitter actually has. We're going to be splitting the first name and last name into their own columns. We will go ahead and have a private string first name. in a private string last name. We are going to go ahead and name these the way that we want them. So name is equal to first underscore name. The column in this case is completely optional. We don't need it. Um, so just keep that in mind. But I like to name the columns exactly how I like. So the next thing that we need is obviously the user is going to have to have an email. So we're going to have a column here. But this time I want the emails to be unique. So we're going to say unique equal to true because we don't want a person signing up with multiple accounts with the same email. This will be private string email. So that one is pretty straightforward. Next, we're going to have a private string phone number. So Twitter requires you to have a phone number. Um, this one I'm not going to put unique on because you can actually link multiple phone numbers or the same phone number to multiple accounts. So I'm not that concerned about it. We're going to have an at column for um, name equal to DOB. Twitter also requires your date of birth. So this can be a private date, uh, date of birth. I'm just using DOB in the name because it's a little bit shorter. And I'm just going to make this an SQL date just to make things a little bit simpler. And then finally, we have two more things that we want. We want a private string username and we want this to be unique as well. So column uh, unique equal to true. We don't want a person with the same username. Uh, and the way that the Twitter works is it actually generates a username for you whenever you sign up. So we will be doing that. So we have to do a little bit extra check to make sure all is well there. And then finally, we want a private string password. So we're going to go in uh, to say private string password and this is going to say at json ignore because we don't want to send the password back and forth it wouldn't be good to have that inside of the user object that we're sending back to the user um, so the last thing that we need to do is set our authorities so this is essentially going to be a mini to mini and create a junction table so we need the mini to mini annotation and the fetch is going to be eager. So we always want to fetch the user's roles every time we get a user. So here we need our join table. And this is when things are gonna get a little bit funky and break because Eclipse does not handle this well. So the first thing inside of our join table is a name. So we're just going to call this user underscore role underscore junction. 
because that is the naming convention I like to use. We're going to have our join columns. So this is going to be what we're taking out of the application user table. So at join column name is going to equal to user underscore ID. And then under inverse join columns, we are going to take the ID of the role. So join column name equal to role underscore ID. It's going to do some magic behind the scenes and make everything work out. So go ahead and now say private set of roles. We don't want to have the same role twice. So that's why we're going to do that. And we're going to call this authorities primarily because that is what the naming convention for spring security. And then we need to go ahead and import all this other good stuff. So it doesn't look like it's going to let me import these because it's going to be silly. So let's go ahead and come up here and we're going to import Java X dot persistence. And we need many to many. And then we need to import Java X dot persistence dot join column. And I believe, um, okay. Why is this still broken? Let me double check something. Oh, I forgot the comma. And we also need to grab join column or join table and fetch type. But voila. So now our user can have some authorities or some roles associated with it. And now the final thing that I want to do is go ahead and make a no argument constructor. So this is going to be public application user. And in here, all we're going to do is just set the authorities to an empty set. So this dot authorities is equal to new hash set. We want to make sure this is not null. That way it doesn't have any issues. And we try to add them, we don't want to essentially have to check every time to see if it's empty or not. So I'm just going to do it that way. And then all we can do is go ahead and right click source and go ahead and generate the getters and setters. Like I said, I'm not going to do an all our constructor at this moment because we're going to be adding more and more fields in here and it's just going to have to rewrite the all our constructor over and over again. I just don't feel like doing that. So let's go ahead and also do source and generate a two string and we should be good to go. So with that being said, we are now able to go ahead and go into our dbeaver and refresh our table. And now you see our user role junction and user and our user has user ID, date of birth, email, first name, last name, password, phone number, and username. Our phone number is a string. That'll be fine. You also see our user role junction with user ID one and role ID one or user ID and role ID. So now we are essentially ready to start developing uh, some controllers and some services and things to actually go ahead and store users in the database. All right, everyone, unfortunately, that's all we've got for today. We end up going ahead and getting both of our models set up that we need. And like I said inside the video, we actually is a reasoning behind getting some of those models. Next episode, hopefully we're going to be able to start or be able to get to the point where we can go ahead and make an API request and put a user into our database that we can use and modify later on. But as always, if you guys enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like, or if you didn't like it, go ahead and put a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out the algorithm. If you guys have any suggestions for what you want to see me to build later, or maybe you just have some suggestions on how to build things a little bit better, go ahead and leave those comments below as well. As I said previously, I'm not necessarily going to see it right away, but maybe I can go back through and go ahead and update or refactor later on. Then finally, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss any of these videos. If you do enjoy, hit the bell icon. You know exactly when they come out. With that being said, I appreciate you all. Have a great day. Peace out, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.